All right, hello and welcome to all. Um, welcome to your uh, virtual college fair. Um, Matthew is my name. I get to be your host for uh, uh, this time and hear from some fantastic schools. Um, I'm gonna go through just um, a couple notes for our time and then we will be able to jump right in and hear from all these great folks. Um, the first note is anytime you have something to ask during this time, the Q&A um, is open for you. Um, I note that because there's no set Q&A time. Um, as your questions come up, please feel free to type them in. Um, my only ask is that you name which school you have um, a question for, or if it's something that you would like the whole group to, just make a note of it. Um, with that being said, the whole time um, your camera um, and microphones will be turned off. Um, so your only role is to sit back, um, listen to all of these great things that these schools um, have to share, take all the notes that you may need, um, but that is your only role during this time. Um, this is session one of three during this fair. So if you haven't booked your next two slots, please do, you can make a whole day of this um, and listen to some really wonderful things. Um, you'll see at the bottom right hand is a link where you can find um, a filming of this. Um, that is the same link that you signed, uh, signed up for. So if it's ringing a little bell, you are correct. That is it. Um, I will share it when, when we end too. So if you miss it now, um, we can find it towards the end. Um, let me show you our order of schools. In the top right, we are session A5. These are the schools that you will hear from during our time. Um, if any questions start to come up, once again, the Q&A is there and you can ask them anytime that you would like. With that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and step out and introduce our first school, the University of Manchester. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, looks great. Okay, great, thank you. Um, let me turn on my video as well, okay. So hi everyone, my name is Anu Lee. I'm representing the University of Manchester today. And so I'll talk to you a little bit about Manchester if you already, uh, if you don't know anything about it already. So we are the University of Manchester located in Manchester, England. So it is, uh, in the northern part of Manchester. I'll show you a map in just a second, but just some background information. We are part of the UK's Russell Group, uh, which identifies world-class research intensive universities in the UK. We have a student population of 40,000 students, 28,000 of those students are undergraduates, um, and we have 29% of our students from outside the UK and EU. So we do have a long history of welcoming students from abroad, including North America with about 700 students from that region currently with us. And we also offer quite a few subjects. It's really difficult to list all the subjects we offer. Um, it's always easier to list what we don't offer. So they're divided into our three faculties, our faculty of biology, medicine, and health, our faculty of humanities, and the faculty of science and engineering. So within those three, the lists are endless. Some rankings here, we're 27th in the world according to the QS World University rankings. Um, we have 25 Nobel laureates currently amongst our, our, we've had 25 Nobel laureates amongst our staff and students. And currently we have two, I believe in physics and math. We're, no, we're the number one most targeted university by top employers. So think global employ, employers like uh, IBM, Apple, Rolls Royce, such companies like that. And we have 500,000 alumni from 190 countries. So our students are far and wide um, doing amazing things. Some quick facts and figures for the University of Manchester. Uh, we do have a student to staff ratio of 13 to one approximately. So you'll still have your bigger lectures, um, but your smaller class sizes do get down to around 13. Uh, the cost of living in Manchester is approximately 13,000 US dollars a year. Um, breaking down tuition fees, starting at 24,000 US dollars for non-lab degrees. And then laboratory degrees are about 31,000 US dollars. And then medicine being the most expensive at $45,000. I'll talk to you a little bit about the campus as well, but first let's look at a map of exactly where Manchester is. I hope you can see this map. 
We're located in the Northwest. So we're more or less in the middle of the UK with two hour, with London two hours south of us and Scotland two hours north. So you can get there by train. We are 20 minutes uh, to the Peak District. So it's a short train ride away from the Lake District. It's beautiful countryside all around. So you can always get to um, some part of the English countryside if you wish to explore some more. In 2019, we were voted the top UK city to live in by The Economist. So students are having a great time living in Manchester and we are one of the largest cities in the UK. Uh, so for US-based flights, I always like students to look into this because it's always nice when you can fly direct to and from your destination. I'm sure COVID might've made some changes to these routes, but there are several USA nonstop flights when flights are back to normal. And a quick aerial view of the campus. Uh, this is the city of Manchester. You could see the city center, how it overlaps with our campus. It's right there, it's walkable, it's runnable, it's bikeable. You don't need a car, you can get there pretty quickly. And our university, uh, we offer students more accommodation options than virtually any other higher ed institution in the UK. So each hall has its own character and there's plenty of information about that on the university accommodation website but a little bit more about that. We do encourage our students to stay in a hall of residence for their first year in particular, especially when you're trying to find your way and you're moving away from home. And we do guarantee accommodation places to all new first year uh, coming to Manchester alone. Um, so not just students from abroad, but also Manchester-based students. Our university halls of residence are also in support of Manchester Student Homes, which is a great resource for all the universities in Manchester for students to find different styles of housing. But there's plenty of information about that online. We do have the options for self-catered or catered halls, um, most likely self-catered because that's the UK way. Uh, students will cook for themselves. You'll have your own room, but you do get to share a kitchen and you'll meet some students from your floor that way as you all are cooking together. Um, you may or may not share a bathroom. It depends on the hall type. You might have your own in suite if you request it, or you'll be using a shared bathroom uh, with four, five, six other people on that floor. Um, you do have, again, guaranteed accommodation for duration of your study. So if you are picking a three-year course or four-year course, you do have guaranteed accommodation while you're there. Uh, there's so many different room types. Again, that's something you should look into on the website so you can see the diversity of housing that's available. So quickly about our um, entry requirements, we do accept the GPA and S, uh, GPA is minimum of 3.0. Uh, for some courses, it's going to be 3.2, 3.2, 3.3. We do accept SAT and ACT requirements. We know there's so many changes with College Board right now and our programs are being flexible with students, but this is what we do have on the website. So this is what we will follow. For any student taking the full IB, uh, 32 to 37 points, again, depending on the program that you're choosing with the three higher level subjects. For the APs and SAT subject tests, again, there are many changes, but based on what we hear on students who have tests available, it's ranging from 555 to 444, depending on each course requirements. And for any student who already has SAT subject tests, we do know they're no longer being offered, but 670, 670, and 650 is usually the minimum for, for uh, most courses. And then lastly, um, there's lots of information about Manchester on the Manchester website, but I will also introduce the chat with a student function, which we do with Unibuddy. Um, this is a great way to give you a better idea of what's going on at Manchester from the student perspective, and you can reach out directly to them or myself. My email's down there in the corner. You can reach out to me via email and we can set up a one-to-one. -one. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you so much, that was great. Um, all right, the next school you will uh, hear from tonight is the University of Westminster. Good afternoon, everybody, or good evening from London. My name's Jane and I'm from the University of Westminster here in London, and I support students um, joining us from the Americas. So you're welcome to get in touch. Do ask questions now in the chat, but you can contact me at any point if you'd like more information. Uh, this is going to be a very brief run, th run through, so feel free to get in touch um, at any point. And you've got my email contact at the top and I'll drop it in the chat as well. 
So quick introduction to us. We're quite different uh, to Manchester. We're obviously in London and we're very much part of London. We were actually established in the early 1800s to teach Londoners professional skills. So that really reflects the course offering that we have today, the uh, teaching methods and the syllabus and the focus on industry. Um, and then also in terms of our teaching staff. Um, so we were one of the first polytechnics, um, one of the first in the UK and in Europe. Um, and it's very much, we focus more on professional accreditation. You'll find a lot of our teaching staff may have current um, practical experience, so currently working in their field as well as teaching. So it's a, a maybe slightly different kind of offering. Um, so we're about an average size, um, obviously, London itself is very big, but central London's really small. And the University of Westminster has about 19,000 students. We're very international. Um, we rank regularly. So in the most recent Times Higher um, world rankings, we're in the top um, 20 in the world, I think, I think sixth in the UK. So very international, that's very much reflecting London as well. Um, and it really means when you're coming as an international student, you can think about um, being a really welcoming environment, but also teaching staff that are used to teaching students from a variety of educational backgrounds. And we are, you know, as I've mentioned, if you don't know London um, and you don't know the UK, it is fairly small and it's great. Obviously, you can travel around and get to know um, different cities while you're with us and also travel to Europe for the weekend when things are normal and travel is allowed. But you've got easy access um, if you're going coming from home, coming and going. Um, you've got five international airports around as well as central train stations and networks. So this is just central London. So as I've mentioned, central London, I think people are often surprised, is really quite small, very accessible um, and very safe. So you've got um, our three central campuses here. You've got Regent Street campus, that's um, along Oxford Street, main shopping area, if you know that in London. You might know Madame Tussauds and Baker Street, where our business school is. And those central London sites, your teaching is normally all on one site and we have accommodation as well. Um, but if you would wanted to walk between those to get an idea of distance, you're looking at about 15, 20 minutes walk. So it's really accessible. And then uh, if you're a football or soccer fan, we've got our Harrow site about 25 minutes from the centre um, uh, next to Wembley Stadium. So just so you'd recognise those. So quick overview of our campus um, and different options. But as I say, this is very brief. So do get in touch or have a look on our website afterwards. So biomedical sciences, psychology, uh, global nutrition, very popular. Um, our Regent Street campus is where we have our social sciences, liberal arts, so things like international relations. Um, you'll notice the buildings are all very different. And when you're looking at Westminster, do look at the subject area and the campus that you'd be at to get an understanding of the experience. This is also where we have our law school. And we do things like museum and gallery studies in conjunction with the Museum of London, the Tate. So you've got, we're really trying to use all those links we have. It's the same, this is our business school. So we've got, we're part of a Regent Street quarter in London. We have thousands of businesses on our doorstep and that really helps our students in terms of networking, masterclasses and talks and work placements as well. And you've got our architecture school here as well. We've got some, some fantastic graduates across architecture interior architecture and then different again you've got our Harrow campus here very modern uh, this is the one that's about 25 minutes from the centre uh, there's accommodation on site um, it's very much a, a campus feel um, and we do things like fashion film tv music um, we really we've got some um, we've got a Spotify playlist on our music sites if you want to see some of our great recent graduates um, hopefully many of them you will know we've got BAFTA award winners here and Oscar nominees so if you're looking at any kind of creative subjects then that's a great option for you as well so you'll notice um, as I say as we go through we do have accommodation and they're either on our different campuses or maybe a 20 to 25 minute journey self-catered again um, you get your own bathroom and then you share a kitchen um, so very similar to a lot of, of the other UK universities when you'll notice you do get your own room and in terms of our entry requirements we are being test optional this year. Um, so we'll take students if where you are unable to take other exams just with a high school GPA, a minimum of three. Um, standard requirements, and you can see more on our website or do get in touch. We take a variety um, of different um, exams, but we understand that you're not necessarily able to take those this year. Um, costs, you're looking at about $20,000 per year, and that's for the three years 
um, in England for a, three, a degree. We are certified for federal loans and we have a scholarship scheme as well. So you can have a look at that. It's live now for September um, and will be announced each year. Um, and we always try and remind people, maybe do look at your costs, look at the budgeting. We've got some great tips on our website about affordable London. It doesn't have to be an expensive option. So work out your totals. Um, you've got some guidance there and think through and actually, um, especially with all the free things to do on your doorstep and the opportunities for work placements and part-time work, um, it can really work out being a capital city. So you've got my contacts there. We've also got some open events coming up. Um, we've just missed, I should have updated it. We've missed just missed yesterday's, but the next one will be in May. So thank you very much. And do get in touch with any other questions. Wonderful, thank you so much. Um, I think there were some wonderful notes that I would like to um, say once again that were just said. Um, one of which is this is just the start um, of conversations with these schools. If there is something that you would like to talk more about, that is a wonderful thing to either use our Q&A or to write down how to reach out more to them. Um, some fantastic notes there. Um, and with that being said too, our Q&A is there. Um, questions that might come up during any of this time or questions that you have about the first two schools, please feel free to use them and put them in there. Um, all right, with that being said, our next school you will hear from tonight um, is Newcastle University. Hi, good evening. My name is Thomas and I am the International Recruitment Manager for North America at Newcastle University. So I'm um, Newcastle is really well known for being based in the city of Newcastle upon time, which is a lively, friendly student city. Um, we're heading back up north from London, so you can see where we are located there in the northeast of England. We're roughly two hours, 50 minutes from London and an hour and a half from Edinburgh. And like Manchester and London, we're also really lucky to have um, access to International Airport only 20 minutes outside of our campus. Um, Newcastle is really well known as being a very student friendly city and we're actually ranked as one of the top places to study in the UK. And we are also the most affordable student city in the UK as well. So cost of living here is definitely something that attracts a lot of students. Newcastle is, is known as a hub for innovation, for technology, advanced manufacturing and the arts. And it's a, a compact city, but yet still very lively with lots of activities, things to do and see. And we're also really lucky to be surrounded by beautiful nature, got access to beautiful beaches and lots of historical architecture as well, as shown by some of these pictures here on the screen. The campus is right at the heart of the city centre. Um, we're really lucky to be able to have a, a wonderful campus feel, but also to be really um, just on the doorstep of all the things that Newcastle has to offer. So you can see there in the bottom left and right hand corner, that's where our campus is located. That's where our teaching happens and also is home to most of our um, accommodation, which is guaranteed for international students. In, in the middle, um, in the gray rectangle is, is the heart of the city center. So you can see you could be on campus or in your accommodation and just a couple of minutes walk from the shops and the restaurants um, that are in the city center. And that is our campus. Our history dates back to the 1830s and that's reflected in some of our beautiful historical architecture. Um, the, the building in the front is our student union, um, but we also have got some fantastic modern buildings as well, um, some of which is still being built at the moment. So we are investing as well heavily for the future. Newcastle has a really outstanding global reputation. We're ranked in the top 160 in the world and in the top 25 universities in the UK. We are part of the Russell Group, one of founding member of the Russell Group like Manchester. And for those of you who don't know the Russell Group, it's often called the UK Ivy League, and it includes um, Oxford, Cambridge, and lots of other universities as well. Um, we're also top five for student satisfaction um, and top 20 in the world, top 10 for graduate prospects. And that actually puts us ahead of places like the University of Oxford, King's College London and University College London. And we're also ranked 11th in the world for sustainability as well. We have roughly 27,000 students um, studying at the university and we teach around 200 bachelor's degrees and 300 master's degrees. And they're split across our three faculties. Some of our top subjects that attract most, of, most American and Canadian students are things like English language and literature, art, history and archeology, span um, our law school and our business school. Also our engineering programs are very popular animal science, marine science. We actually have our own marine research vessel that students get to go on. 
um, and our School of Computing, the university is actually home to the National Centre for Data and the National Centre for Innovation. And then finally, dental sciences, pharmacy, psychology and medicine. And just to uh, let you know, things like farmers, uh, things like medicine, dentistry, law, um, they are actually um, direct entry programmes in the UK. You don't need to study those as a graduate programme. We are not test optional like Westminster, but we are test flexible. And um, so we obviously understand that um, some of you haven't been able to take APs this year. And obviously the SAT subject tests have now been cancelled um, forever. So if you have got those, that's great. But if not, then we will consider things like dual enrollment credits, honours classes, AP classes um, in place of an AP test or a SAT subject test. Um, and if you're taking the IB, then um, generally speaking, we were looking for 32 points or above. It's worth noting that certain subjects will re require higher grades or they re may require a specific background. In terms of our tuition fees, just to give you a comparison, this is the closest ranked US competitor in the US News Global Rankings. Um, you can see there per year, we're roughly $35,000 versus $72,000 um, for the US college. And also what's really important is we have a three-year graduation rate of 96%. They have a six-year graduation rate of 87.5%. So it's highly, highly, highly likely that your degree will only take you three years to complete in the UK. And we have a variety of different scholarships. These do change from year to year, so it's worth checking our website to get the, the most recent information. We're ranked outstanding for our student support, so it's not just our academics that's excellent, but also our support, our pre-application, post-application, pre-arrival and post-arrival, as well as our award-winning career service, which is actually available to use up to three years after graduation and also our student experience and our overall student, ex um, student union offering as well. We have 200 different societies and 60 different sports clubs. We're actually ranked top 10 in the UK for our sports. So if you are an athlete, then definitely give us, um, have a look on our website. Um, and as I said, we're investing heavily in our facilities and that includes our sports center. We've got lots of virtual activities for you to uh, get involved in, campus tours, our fantastic YouTube channel, and you can also chat with a current student through our UniBuddy program. And you can also get in touch with me uh, using my email address as well. Um, I will share those links for you in the chat function um, so that if you did miss them, then you can follow up yourselves. All right, that's everything from me and I'll hand over to uh, the next university. Wonderful, that was great. Thank you so much. All these schools so far have just looked stunning. Um, all right, folks, the next school you will hear from uh, the University of Dundee. Brilliant, thank you very much. Let me just share my screen now. Perfect, hopefully you can all see this okay. Um, so my name is Grant, I am a Senior International Officer here at the University of Dundee and Regional Lead for the Americas. You can probably tell from my accent that I am still from the UK but from a slightly different area, so I am from Scotland and that is where the University of Dundee is based. I will try and speak um, as slowly and as legible as possible. Um, as Scots, we do have um, a, a tendency to speak quite fastly when we're doing presentations in six minutes. And um, hopefully I can get all this information across to you in this time. So why come to study in Scotland as opposed to anywhere else in the UK or the world? We have fine arts and culture and um, we have stunning landscapes. So no matter where you choose to study, in Scotland, it's likely you're going to be only around a half an hour, 45 minute drive from generally some of the most stunning countryside, um, if not in the UK, but indeed in the world. Um, obviously, I'm very biased being a Scotsman myself, but I do believe that in Scotland we are very friendly people um, and we always extend a very warm welcome to any students joining us, particularly from the United States. We have a quite a rich and historic heritage, so obviously being a Scottish presentation, it would be a, a Scottish presentation without including a picture of a castle. Um, so we've included that here. And um, we have many internationally acclaimed music and cultural festivals. So there's the Edinburgh International Festival, for example, one of the biggest festivals in the world. Um, and at a university level, we have a very flexible degree structure. And this is what really sets Scotland apart from the rest of the UK. So if you study in Scotland, you study for four years and three, the benefit for is the 
you will have during your studies. So for example, in your first and second year, first subject, so things like medicine and dentistry won't be, but for things like English, history, you'll have the ability to take up to three different subjects, but these can be anything that you would like. So you could take history, geography, and philosophy if you would like. If you don't like one after one year, you can drop that and take another subject. It is only in your last two years that that is when you decide to specialise in either one or two subjects. But your first two years... So that is Scotland as a whole. Grant, we may have lost you. Oh no. Well, that is okay. The times of being on Zoom. Um, we will wait and see if he joins back to see if we can um, finish up his time. I think for now, we're going to go ahead and go on to the next school and then we can have um, our friend Grant come back in when he joins us at the end. Um, which all of these so far, I'm taking a trip to every single school. Um, they look beautiful. <laughs> um, all right, let's go ahead and move on to um, University College Cork. Hey, excellent. Thanks so much for having me. Give me two seconds while I get this going. Um, let's see. All right. Does that look good there? Is that showing up? Looks good. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Maggie Cardosi, and I represent University College Cork in Ireland. Um, I actually loved studying in Ireland so much, I did it twice. So it's my um, pleasure to um, be able to talk to you a little bit about a place that I certainly consider to be my second home, and, and I hope that you will um, make your home one day too. So let's get started. Um, first, a little bit about the city of Cork, where UCC is located. Um, Cork is the second largest city in the Republic of Ireland, and it's located down around the southern part of, of the country, pretty near the south coast. And just so you know, Ireland is a pretty small country. It's roughly the size of the state of Indiana, so very easy to get around and um, has a reputation for being very warm and welcoming. Um, and a Lonely Planet review um, recently said that everything good in Ireland can be found in Cork, um, which I certainly can't disagree with. Um, Cork definitely lives up to Ireland's reputation as being um, warm, friendly, safe, and welcoming. Um, I also love that it's incredibly easy to navigate in Cork. You can walk around um, pretty much everywhere, um, although if you want to, you can get a public bus. Um, and there's, even though Cork is a relatively small city with about 200,000 people altogether, there's no shortage of things to do. Um, we're over indexed when it comes to arts and culture in Cork City. Um, so lots of museums, galleries, um, concert venues, um, festivals and uh, restaurants um, to, to keep you busy. But um, also if you'd like to go um, outside of Cork City, County Cork is home to some of the most beautiful heritage sites, beaches and landscapes in Ireland. So those are right at your fingertips. Um, and then also, if you want to um, get out to other places, um, very easy to do so via um, bus system and um, train transport within Cork. And also, if you want to get to Europe and other places beyond, um, you can do so easily from the Cork Airport, which is just four miles from our campus. Um, and speaking of campus, um, there's a lovely photo of what our campus looks like. Um, our campus dates from 1845, and it's a fantastic mix of kind of the, the modern and, and the historic, um, from our Arctic gallery on campus to our sports facilities, um, student accommodation, and academic buildings. Um, we are number one for the student experience in Ireland, so there is a wealth of supports to make sure that you are um, integrated, acc acclimated, and thriving within our campus community. Um, and our degree programs, of which there's over 100, um, they're internationally recognized. We are ranked in the top 2% of universities worldwide. So your degree um, from UCC is going to mean something wherever you choose to take it. 
Um, our 22,000 students come from all over the world, um, representing 104 different countries. So you'll be living and studying with students, not just from Ireland, but from all over the world. Um, and then we're very proud of as well, um, is the fact that we are the world's first green campus and we're currently um, number nine for sustainability. Um, so if you are someone who's particularly interested in the human impact on climate change um, or in, are particularly environmentally conscious, you are going to find a like-minded like -minded and supportive community at UCC. A little bit about our degree programs. Um, I mentioned we have over 100, and those are spread across four different colleges, the College of Arts, Celtic Studies, and Social Science, Science, Engineering, and Food Science, Business and Law, and Medicine and Health. Um, these programs can be either three or four years, and they are direct entry honors programs, um, which means that we don't have gen ed requirements. And you do, do need to have a, a relatively good idea of what you want to study at the time of application. Um, some of our more popular programs include our BA Arts program, Anthropology, Criminology, Forensic Chemistry, Psychology and comp Computing, um, Applied Geosciences, and Public Health Sciences. And um, one really great thing about our programs at UCC is that um, practical learning is the cornerstone of our curriculum. So almost all of our programs at the undergraduate level are going to have some piece of practical learning, whether it's an internship course, a paid work placement, or a study abroad opportunity to make sure that you are both world and work ready um, when, when you leave our classrooms. Um, and we're very proud of the fact that we are a leader for industry engagement within Ireland. So up there in the right-hand corner, I have just a sampling of some of our industry partners actually located right in Cork City. Um, it's not an exhaustive list, but I know that you'll probably recognize a few of those names and logos. Um, and it's because of these relationships that we have um, and our focus on practical learning that our students are so employable with about 94% of our undergraduates going on to employment or further study within six months of graduation. Um, and I should mention too, um, number one, you there's an automatic one year stay back visa for anybody who graduates from an, uh, an undergraduate program in Ireland to stick around looking for work for up to a year. Um, and also um, our degrees are relatively cost effective especially if you're considering out of state or private school tuition in the US, um, coming in at around $34,000 for your total cost of attendance for the year. We do have scholarships as well. Um, and just a, a couple of notes on our application process before I, I um, let you move on. Um, we do a direct application via our website and we do rolling admission from mid-December every year. Um, minimum requirements would be a 3.0 unweighted GPA or a 26 IB total, although some more competitive courses may be looking for up to a 3.7 unweighted GPA or a um, 36 IB total. Um, we typically would look for a combination of test scores as well. Um, um, however, with um, the pandemic, we have also gone test flexible for this year. So if you have any questions about those requirements, um, we're happy to help you. We'll also con consider AP exams and courses, honors courses, dual enrollment um, when, when they benefit you as an applicant. So um, I'm just going to leave it at that for now. Um, there is my information as well as a nice little handy QR code if you have any other questions. But as they say in Ireland, go Romila Magat, and thanks for listening. Thank you so much. Five for five stunning schools. Um, we have our friend Grant back. So we're going to go ahead and jump back in to the University of Dundee. Thank you so much and thank you again for giving me this opportunity just to quickly speak about Dundee again and um, the joys of online and virtual working. Obviously if I was on a campus with our super fast Wi-Fi um, I'm sure this wouldn't have happened. So just to continue where I left off from the University of Dundee. Um, so we are based in the city of Dundee on the east coast of Scotland. The University of Dundee itself um, is very well ranked in the UK so we are a top 20 ranked institution according to the Guardian. We're living in the UK for student satisfaction but most importantly Importantly, we're 14th in the world for international student satisfaction. So when students come to join us from across the world, including the USA, um, they do tend to have a really great student experience when they come to Dundee. We are test optional for September 2021 entry, and we have rolling admissions. So you can apply either through UCAS, which is the UK admission service, or you can apply directly to the University of Dundee at no charge. Um, so whichever is most convenient for you. And we also offer scholarships up to £5,000 for students from the USA. So there's great opportunities 
for you to study here in Dundee. So Dundee is what would be called a city campus. So we have a campus-based university, which means everything pretty much contained within that picture you see um, is part of the university and will be everything that you will need for your university experience. So our accommodation is located just kind of to the left of the picture there. Now, all of our accommodation is single occupancy, so you'll never share with anyone. And it's also all en suite. So no matter which student accommodation you go into in Dundee, you are absolutely guaranteed your own bathroom. And I cannot tell you how big a bonus this is uh, when you look at university accommodation and you, you go to university. Also within this, there is the state-of-the-art gym facilities. There is the student union, which has been ranked in among the top five in the whole of the UK. So that's both a daytime venue but you can get a cheap cup of coffee, um, but also a nighttime venue where it turns into sort of a five floor nightclub. And all of your lectures will also be located here, but only around a five minute walk and we will take you into the city centre. So you have best of both worlds of having a safe campus experience, but also within five minute walk from a city centre with all the available facilities. We have a great student life in Dundee as well as academics. So there's over 250 different student societies that you can join. So everything from subject societies to things like the Tea Appreciation Society. So in Dundee, that is called the Dun Tea Society. It was probably the most British thing you're ever going to hear. Um, and we have over 45 different sports clubs. Whatever you want to do alongside your studies, um, there will be available for you. And we have 10 different schools within the university. So whether you would like to study art and design, business, dentistry, medicine, there's hopefully Going to be something for you here in Dundee. And with that, so if you do need to get in contact, please do feel free to give me an email or you can add my phone number by scanning the QR code or typing that into your contacts there. And you can get in contact by either sending a WhatsApp um, or sending an email to hopefully answer any information that I can. But thank you again and thank you again for the additional time as well. Thank you so much. Um, all right, folks, our last school of um, the evening. Um, I'm not sure if could make it. Let me just check in before we move on. The University of Aberdeen. Okay. Um, if that was a school you were here for, please go to their site. It, they have some wonderful things uh, to check out. Um, and I'm sure you'll find some fantastic things to reach out with. Um, all right, a big thank you once again from all of these reps. Um, we have some time for a group Q&A, maybe a question or two, which are some of my favorites. Um, so at this time, I'm gonna ask our reps to turn uh, their cameras back on. And we're going to go ahead and ask a couple things. So my first question to ask, um, is what tips would you give students who are going through the college search process right now? Um, we know that this has been quite a wild year, but we know that college searching wasn't an easy path previously. Um, so with that being said, what, what tips would you have for those who are going through, through this right now? Um, if we could go with the same order that we did, that would be fantastic. Great, so um, my advice would be to reach out to a representative from the school that you're looking at. I, I think especially if you're an international student, it might seem a little daunting, all the things that you're being asked for, maybe some terms you don't know. That's what we're all here for. We're here to help you and explain things along the way. Definitely, definitely reach out and get some more information because the information does vary school to school. So don't assume one thing applies to the next school and also don't assume something within the same school applies to all their programs. So just ask any question. There is no question um, too dumb or too, you know, anything that you shouldn't be asking us. You should definitely just reach out and ask what you need to ask. That's definitely the most important thing. That is exactly what we're here for. Ask questions, um, don't be afraid to, and you know, ask questions to other students on social media, get in touch, find out everything you can. Um, my other main tip really is when you're looking across programs, um, both um, comparing different countries, but just within the different institutions, um, you might find that some courses have the same name, but very different course content or a completely different name, but actually very similar programs. So always look at the course con content of, of any program you're looking at. Um, it should be there on the website with information in quite a lot of detail. And if not, just get in touch with, with one of us or the university's website, general contact. Um, my advice would just be that 
um, for England um, specifically, when you're applying, you generally apply to a major specifically. So rather than applying to uh, a college in general and then picking your major at a later point, um, you really need to think firstly about what it is that you actually want to study um, and then find out which colleges uh, teach that subject. Um, it's quite a different process too in the US where you may be shortlist some colleges and then you think about what majors they teach and which one you might like to pick. Yeah, I think um, everything, everything's been said already, but um, yeah, just get involved in as many virtual activities such as this as you can. Um, definitely one of the benefits at the moment of, of the situation is that there's loads more resources online than maybe there would have been before, so, so keep getting involved. And, and I would have to say too, um, I think that um, going across an ocean or, or a country for college, it can be very intimidating, but take in personal inventory of uh, kind of what your values are and what you're looking for in a school, like what, what type of school and what programs are going to be the best fit for you, um, you know, regardless of what you're, you're hearing from your friends or on social media or what have you, um, because you're, you're really looking into making an investment um, for, for your own personal and professional growth. So um, keeping in mind what um, is most important to you is, is going to be really helpful. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, so my last uh, thing to ask the group um, is to share a fun fact um, um, about your school. Um, I've already planned a trip to every single school, so now I'm looking for those fun facts to see while I'm there. Um, interesting or fun fact. Um, oh no, I'm blanking. Can we come back to Manchester? I'll have something. <laughs> Um, so for Westminster, uh, we actually have our own cinema. Uh, it's just been reopened. It was the, uh, the birthplace of British cinema and shared the first moving image film in Europe. So, and it's reopened now and it's open to the public. So anyone is welcome to come. And we also show some of our graduate work there as well. Um, so interesting fact about Newcastle. Um, we were the only university in the UK to award um, Martin Luther King with an honorary degree during his lifetime. And he actually traveled to the university to accept it. He gave an impromptu speech on campus. Um, and we actually have a statue now on campus to uh, recognize that uh, momentous occasion. Um. Difficult question. I would say our funnest fact would be that Jay-Z's dentist um, was educated at the University of Dundee. And I'm not seeing Jay-Z's teeth, so I don't know what this is about our dental school, um, but it's something a little bit different. Um, for University College Cork, um, it's like a fun tradition. So um, there is a statue of Professor George Boole, who is our um, first professor of mathematics outside of our library. And it's tradition to rub his nose before exams for good luck. Um, and so the nose is actually worn down over time if you look closely. But if you don't know who George Boole is, um, he invented um, Boolean logic or Boolean algebra, which laid the foundation for um, the information age. So um, you are all welcome. <laughs> Um, it's, I don't know if, you, if it's fun, it's fun if you like physics, but uh, Ernest Rutherford split the atom at Manchester. That's an interesting fact. Um, fun if you like physics. Those are all fun. Thank you. Um, all right, folks, that winds up our time. Um, thank you so much. This was such a joy. Um, a big thank you to all of our reps who shared all that they did. Um, and a thank you to all of our students who are on now. Um, it is a real joy to be here with you, especially on Sunday. Um, I'm going to say just um, a couple of notes to wrap us up. Um, as I close out of this, um, a survey will pop out, pop up. If you could fill that out, that'd be great. Um, and then the last two are notes that I said, but just to bring it back, um, this is session one of three. So if you haven't signed up for the next two slots, um, there is still time, please do. Um, we can have some more fun just like this. Um, and then that link right there um, at the end is the same link that you use to sign up for this. Um, we do film all of these and that is the link where you can find it um, in about a uh, week's time. Um, once again, thank you so much. 
Um, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I hope our paths cross again soon. Bye.